Have you ever drank with the devil in the pale moonlight? Have you? <laughs> if you have, this, this has Luna, so I'm assuming it means moon, but I don't speak Italian. Um, stay tuned for the review of this Pinot Grigio. Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Diamond. Before we begin today's video, if you like it, maybe share it with your friends, leave a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe to the channel, and also click that notifications bell, and make sure you click all notifications, because I am doing live streaming, and it would be cool if uh, you got to join me and drink along with me when I do some of those events. Anyway, today I'm going to be reviewing, <laughs> after my bad, bad Joker impersonation, uh, <laughs> the Gamma de Luna. Pinot Grigio from Italy. It is 12% alcohol by volume, and I paid $9, $8, somewhere around, I'll put eight to nine on the thing. It'll be like right here. I'll put eight to nine uh, dollars for at my local store, H-E-B. So first of all, screw top, plus one. It is a DOC wine, so hey, it is not bottom tier, but it's not top tier. That's not bad. Let's pour a sample and see what it looks like. It looks like almost every other Italian Pinot Grigio that I've had. Imagine that, they have uniformity. So looking at it from a standpoint, it is pale lemon, no artifacts, no cloudiness. All right, so on the nose, hmm, hmm. Red apple, a little bit of pear, like an orange, like an orange juice. It's like a, maybe like a lemon peel. No, not lemon. Lime. Could be lemon. Oh God, I'm so off today. Ah, okay, hold on. Nose is burning. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna say lemon lime peel because I can't tell which one it is. I'm having a hard time differentiating it. I think the orange is throwing me off. At least that's an excuse I'm gonna have when I make this video. So, yeah, but I mean, it's all, I mean, it's not very complicated. It, it smells, it smells like it's a little bit of like a stone aspect to it. But it's more like a chalk. It kind of smells like, do I have any over here? Ah. So, I always keep a piece of chalk around here because chalk is my calibrator, whether or not it's quartz, stone, pebble, whatever. So, smelling chalk and tasting chalk, that's my calibrator because it's kind of in the middle of all those things. Mm, no, it's not chalk, it's like river stone. So, yeah, it's totally river stone. Uh, but, I mean, with all those things, let's get to the taste. Wow. So, the, the shining things in this wine are the fact that one, actually has a medium nose. Pinot Grigio is not typically like aromatic. You normally have to kind of move it around a little bit, so that's nice. Two, medium plus acid and on top of that man that green apple and that lemon slash lime really pop but the funkiness of it is that even though it's only like 12 percent abv the alcohol presents like 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 it's there it's an element of what you're tasting that's not something i find very common in pinot grigio normally alcohol is very subdued you get a lot of like heavy fruit and the alcohol is just like an afterthought not on this not on this all right in terms of everything else though uh medium minus body medium minus finish it presents almost like it's medium alcohol but it doesn't stick around long enough it presents uh, the alcohol is there on the approach but it doesn't like go into the mid palate so i'm gonna go ahead and say low alcohol in terms of intensity medium plus intensity uh, uh. Medium plus intensity on the green fruit and the lemon slash lime, and medium intensity on everything else. So it's kind of like this medium plus medium. It's not necessarily in balance in total of all the fruit. I'm getting too far ahead of myself. I'm getting into the blank. Um, but it's 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 interesting. No tannins. What I am going to do for this wine is go straight to the blank now because that's what I do in my, my videos. All right. So in terms of balance, I'm I'm only going to give you half a point. And, and the reason why is because you have a lot of acid compared to a medium minus almost like a weak body. And so going into that, it's a little bit off balance there. The alcohol presents up front and then it doesn't carry through. You have this weird spikiness where kind of two of the four-ish elements that I'm tasting in here are really high 
compared to the others. Um, like that whole like Riverstone, it's it's there, but it's kind of like pushed down with the orange and everything else is like really pushed up. Uh, raise the room. Anyway, so that's where, where it's at in terms of that. So for length, me minus, I'm not really getting it lasting too long, so no points there. Intensity, I'll give you half a point because you have medium intensity on the nose, you have at least a medium intensity on the palate, uh, with some things going medium plus, so you got that. For complexity, you have, you have the green notes, multiple green notes. You have a little bit of a stoniness, which is not typically expected. You have some citrus, I have a few different forms of citrus, two to three depending on if you can actually get if it's lemon or lime or not. But for me, I'm just gonna loop them together because apparently I suck tonight when it comes to tasting this wine. All right, so I mean, you have some things going on for you. And for Pinot Grigio, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a full point. I'll, just, I'll be nice, I'll give you a full point. So in the end, you have half a point for balance, no points for length, half a point for intensity, and a full point for complexity, which is very rare that I give a full point for complexity on a Pinot Grigio, but um, really I feel like you earned it because you tricked me with the lemon lime and I'm kind of pissed off about it. So ultimately you get two points, that's good. You're a good wine. I'm not disappointed by this purchase. The only thing I don't like about this wine, really, and I'm going to be honest about it, is that the bottle is blue. And so, if I was buying this wine, say, say you're, just imagine I'm around a few years from now on YouTube. Or in life, I mean, just imagine it. Unless you hate me, then don't imagine this, and this is a mood exercise. Um, this wine, which is a 2019, say three years from now, how do you know it hasn't turned by accident? How do you know looking at, like, if you pull this out of wherever you're holding your wine, how do you know if this is brown or not? You don't until you pour it out. And then at that point, you're either like, oh, it's that's interesting, and you still taste it, and then game over. Or you pour it out and you just have total disappointment because this is the only wine you have left because it's 2022 or 2023 and the, the whole apocalypse has happened years ago and you're scavenging and this is all you can find at some random dude's wine fridge in Texas because he had to abandon the home super quickly and take everything with him and he didn't have space for the damn Pinot Grigio. But you don't know if it's bad because you had to open it first and you were hoping it was good and you don't know now. But other than that, it's, it's a good writing. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the, I'm probably butchering this because I butcher every language, including English. The Gemma de Luna, Gemma de Luna, oh, God, don't, I'll just say them both just in case, I'll cover my bases. Pinot Grigio, I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, um, I'm gonna be a little shellfish and go downstairs and drink this one. I don't actually have any shellfish, but that'd be a great pairing. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pair this with John Wick because it's the best movie ever and Sometimes you need something lighthearted when you watch that movie. I'll see you later.